So hello, hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to this full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces ceremony. There's a lot. We got a lot to go through today and I love, we got so many people coming and joining us from different parts of the world. Love seeing all of your comments in the uh, chat. If you're watching us live here, you can put your, where you're joining us from in the chat. If you're watching the replay, play, put it also right there in the comments or if you're watching on YouTube, we'd love to know where you're joining from as we journey into this time together. There is such a beautiful uh, experience going on right now uh, in this world, and I'm here to share with you what that is. So tonight we're going to embark on a journey of deep spiritual transformation, healing, and empowerment. This full moon eclipse in Pisces opens a powerful cosmic gateway for soul alchemy. It's inviting us to release our old emotional patterns, access profound intuitive wisdom, and realign with our highest spiritual path. And throughout this ceremony, we're gonna explore the dynamic energies of the Pisces Virgo axis, balancing the mystical insight with practical action so that we can embody our transformation in everyday life. And we're gonna tap into the divine wisdom of the Egyptian goddess Isis, known for her healing, magic, and protection, and explore how her energy aligns with this powerful lunar event. And together, we're going to delve into the potent dynamics of eclipse season, working with practices to release long-held karmic patterns, ground ourselves, and harness the transformative power of this eclipse portal. Supported by the cosmic energies of Uranus and Pluto, we're going to explore how to integrate these revelations into our lives and open ourselves to the unexpected miracles and shifts that this eclipse brings. So I'm really excited to have you joining me today for this sacred moment of soul alchemy and a connection with these transformative forces that really allow us to manifest, heal, and grow in alignment with our soul's purpose. My name is Melissa Minnick, and I am the founder of the Sacred Soul Alchemy Mystery School. If you're new to my world, I am a scientist who came into spirituality kind of backwards. Uh, I work with quantum physics and neuroscience and psychology, and now I've done trainings all over the world in ancient wisdom in Egypt and in India and in South America to allow for the opening of understanding of the merging of ancient wisdom and modern science and how we can harness this energy in our lives. So I'm a channel and a medium and a healer, but I came from a world of science and really want to share with you this unique experience. Uh, and so some people really always ask me, they're like, really, what is astrology real or what does it have to do with me and my world and how does it really affect me? Well, in 1995, Dr. Tony Nader discovered that the, uh, the sun, moon and stars, the universe was mapped in our brain and in our cells and our DNA. So literally it is the U inverse. The universe is inside of you. And so what's happening on the outside cannot not affect what is happening on the inside. And so we use this wisdom to allow ourselves to harness the energies of this time. Take what, take this all with a grain of salt. What works for you works for you. You know, believe what you want, uh, you know, harness the energy of what you want, but know that this is about transforming for your own life. So you can understand and always be sharing some of the astrology but if you're like screw the astrology i just want the healing part or i just want to work through my own shit, then take that piece of it right but know that these energies are all working together and we're going to combine this work in a way that's going to be super powerful and transformative for all of us and that's really the energy of what we are uh, experiencing today so i would love to know either put it in the chat or in the comments what is it, what's your intention 
right now like what do you want from this new moon eclipse or if you're not even sure or, uh, what are the full moon eclipse oh. Uh, or you're not even sure what that is. What is it that you just want for yourself right now? Is there something you're wanting to grow and, and reach or a destiny? Or is there a something you're trying to heal or let go of? I just want to see where the collective is right now. I'm just really curious. Okay, let's see. Clarity, direction, a clear next step that's embodied. Clear, clear, clear. Yes, cut, cutting away ties to old change. Clarity. Release emotional old emotions and bring in new initiation of self-care and clarity. I love lots of clarity coming on through here. Complete healing, learn and grow. Yeah. There's a lot of releasing old ties, leveling up to the next part of my life. Yes. Release. Um, I'm ready to release hurt. Beautiful. Continuing to remember energy and motivation to clear energies, remove mind worms, clear out built up work. Beautiful. Such incredible intentions that you all have as we're stepping into this beautiful ceremony together today. So how today's, oh, surrender, I saw the word surrender. This is about surrender and it is one of the major energies of this theme for right now. So what we're going to first do is we're going to dive into um, understanding about this full moon eclipse, what it is that has to do with this cosmic gateway. We're going to dive deep into the uh, energies of the ways that we want to work with this we're going to talk about the archetypes that have to do with it and then we're going to do some ceremonies to really allow ourselves to draw into this energy so i'm going to ask for you to be in active participation um, if you have pen paper journal we're going to do some actual work here today together um, and then there's even going to be a releasing ceremony that we're going to do i have here um, it's already starting to fall apart. It's been in my divine masculine altar. This is beautiful coffee colored uh, rose that I'm going to be using. Um, so if you have a, a flower or a stone or something that you want to use for part of our releasing ceremony, um, that'll be really powerful. But make sure that it's something that you don't mind getting rid of uh, at the end of this ceremony. Don't use your favorite stone in the world and then have to like find a way to get rid of it, right? Okay. So um, first of all, let's just come into a collective energy together. Just wanna take a moment to just ground in to this moment in this time. So let's take a few deep breaths, deep into your belly, right down into your pelvic bowl, and just squeeze what we call your mula bandha lock, which is that root chakra or your perineum you know like when you have to go to the bathroom and you have to stop the stop the stream that squeeze right just squeeze that area as you breathe deep into your belly and then when you breathe out i want you to shoot that breath and that energy right down into mother gaia right into the center of the earth we're grounding your energy into the earth allowing for this energy to, to stabilize you in this moment. So just breathing deep, holding that root lock, that mula bandha lock, and then breathing down and right into Mother Gaia. And then when you breathe up, I want you to just breathe up her energy, Bring up, breathe up those golds and coppers and, and nutrients and the browns and the greens of Mother Earth that stabilizing energy, that nurturing Mother Gaia energy. Just breathe that energy up into your body. Allow it to just solidify. Imagine that you have like golden roots grounding you down in. We're gonna just be using that grounding energy today just to come together. So now, on your next breath, I want you to just breathe into your heart. Breathing in. And breathing out, feeling the love, feeling the energy, allowing, opening up. And then from your heart, you're just going to imagine a beautiful silver cord dropping down, down, down. Again, right into your earth star chakra, right into Mother Earth, into that beautiful crystalline chamber. Just grounding your energy in and allowing for yourself to feel that love, that energy of Mother Gaia. So welcome, welcome to this moment. Thank you for being here with me today. And let's 
now that we're here and present together, let's talk about the significance the, of this full moon eclipse. So full moons represent the culmination and illumination, right? They're a time when emotions, circumstances, and relationships that have been building throughout this lunar cycle come to a head. They inspire us to reflect and to release. And the lunar eclipse is um, an amplification of this energy. So think of it as like, you know, we're here and we're going to just amplify, boom, boom, boom. And so there's more of this culmination. They act as supercharged portals for clearing out the old and creating space for new beginnings. How many of you are ready to clear out the old and create space for new beginnings? If you, that is you put a one in the chat. If you're like, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next thing. I'm done with the shit. Like, okay, can we be done with it? This is an 18 year cycle that is ending. So when you, when we look at this, we're looking at 18 year cycle that you can finally say I'm done with. I'm, I'm ready for something new. Eclipses are moments when the universe intervenes. It nudges us or it pushes us towards our destined path. And to be on your highest destiny timeline, to be on your highest path, you must let go of all the baggage, the karma, surrender, which is the theme of this lunar eclipse. So this beautiful eclipse in Pisces is a rare and powerful opportunity to recalibrate your spiritual journey. It's as if the universe is opening up a door. It's inviting you to walk through and embrace deeper emotional healing, soul growth, and spiritual transformation. So let's start with that first piece, deeper emotional healing. What is it that needs to be healed still? You know, I was going through an experience recently where I thought I had completely healed something. <laughs> you know, have you ever had that? You're like, I'm so good with that, right? My, my partner and I separated back in April and uh, you know, I've been really good. I moved to another state. I moved here to Austin, Texas and I've been wonderful. I'm on this new high timeline. And I've been doing all these wonderful things. And then I went to Burning Man and uh, we were both there and I got hit with this experience of like this deep, deep attachment that was really deep in me that I didn't even know was there of wanting to have the healing come about the for him to heal, for it to heal so that we could possibly maybe get back together. And I was like, uh oh, and I had this just over this past week and this deep relief and karmic um, finally letting go. And so we have that. What's your deep emotional healing that maybe is buried so deep that it's at the core that it's mine was attached to 75 lifetimes of stuff, like 75 lifetimes that I've been working through healing this fear of rejection and abandonment and this, and this deep emotional thing that I finally got to release finally like done with you know and so that's where we're at i usually go through my experiences a little earlier than what i go to teach and then i always get to come with a story about what's going on and so now this is where you're at and so this in energetic intensity of this event is felt before and after this eclipse and we have a second eclipse on october 2nd right which is a uh, a um a solar eclipse on the new moon on October 2nd that is like creating this powerful energetic portal. We're in the midst of this energetic portal of energy that of releasing. And so this, this eclipse here is on our south, what is called our south node. Now, what does that mean? So think of the south as the past, right? The south is, is the old karmic ties. It's all the crap that you haven't let go of. It's the stuff from your past. And think of what do you think of true north? So the next eclipse is on October 2nd is in your north node, which means it's your destiny. It's your, it's your path forward. It's your highest timeline and it's moving you towards that thing. So in this eclipse energy, everything is working towards leaving these things behind and moving towards those things there. And so we're in this powerful illumination, right? One of the most powerful of this year in this Eclipse falls in the intuitive and mystical sign of Pisces. Pisces is the spiritual warrior. It's the um, place where the, it, it's asking us for deep reflection. It's asking us for spiritual insight. It's a water sign, right? So what is water? Water is movement. Water is emotion. So it's saying release, release your emotions 
And Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac and represents the culmination of a cycle. So this is a potent time for endings, completions, closures on emotional and karmic levels. So we have, we have the full moon, which is about closures. We have the eclipse, which is, is amplifying that. And then we have Pisces, which is the end of a culmination of a cycle again. And so we're using this powerful eclipse as a reset button. How many of you want to have a reset button? Like, you know, like they have, um, you ever seen the Staples commercial and it goes, you know, like hit the easy button, right? Well, here we go. Here's your red reset button, huh? Do you want it ready to hit the reset button? That's what we're doing here. Um, and so this one is asking us to release the past. So I want you to think for a moment, what is it that's holding you back? What is it that's keeping you stuck? Is there an old emotional wound or an illusion that's been holding you back? Right? So the South node, the point of past karma is activated during this time. It's inviting you to clear patterns that may have been cycling in a couple of different times in your life. So if you're kind of thinking about, well, what could I, what could I still need to work on or what's there? Look back at patterns from 2015 to 2016 or even earlier 2006 to 2008. And this is the closing of that 18 year cycle. And so it's bringing these karmic themes from past lives and ancestral patterns back into our life. And it's, and it's been part of this, this whole season and this year has been about this, this releasing and moving into a new timeline, releasing and moving into a, to, a new timeline. And so it's, a, it's asking you to really let that go. So I want you to just take a moment and think about that. Just think, what is the emotion? What is the thing that you want to let go? We're just going to hold on to that. We're going to be using this energy to, to really work with this ceremony. And we're going to keep moving on and talk more about these, this Pisces and how this works with us. So Pisces is a is ruled by Neptune. So Pisces is the zodiac mystic. It's the dreamer. It's the healer, and it governs the, governs the realm of our subconscious, our intuition, our dreams, and the spiritual world. So think about that. What, like what has been subconsciously controlling, right? Like if 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 you have a pattern. I call it a harmonic point in my book that's coming out in March of 2025, I call it high on life or prescription for bliss. I talk about harmonic points and it's when you have a repeating pattern where the events and everybody else in the, in the pattern is different, but it's the same emotion, the same feeling, the same thing coming back time and time again. And it's because of this harmonic point, this pattern is in this somewhere in the subconscious right, that we have that. So the Pisces is giving awareness to what's in our subconscious. And it's also asking us, pay attention to your intuition and your dreams and the spiritual world. You might have heightened dreams at this time you know, to awaken you to what's happening. During this eclipse, the veil between the physical and spiritual world is very thin. So it's allowing for you to have these deep intuitive insights, spiritual downloads, moments of divine connection. I'm curious, how many of you have been having like dreams or intuitive hits or insights um, recently, like put a two in the comments. If you're like, yeah, I've been noticing some of these different experiences or yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Different intuitive insights. Yeah. This is exactly the, the experience of what we have going on right now. Right. And so this is where it's asking pay attention, pay attention as a water sign. Pisces is asking us to flow with our emotions rather than resist them. So when I had my ugly cry on Saturday, I literally cried like I hadn't cried in almost 20 years. Uh, and I was like, where is this coming from? It was like deep and it was actually connected to 20 years ago. I was like feeling this portal of energy from that, that young, young, abandoned, rejected, you know, a young, young one of over 20 years ago that was feeling the grief and finally the healing and the letting go of the experience that I had had back then. And so this, this idea of water, right, where it's symbolizing intuition, healing and emotional depth. And so one of the um, ceremonies that I will, I'd like to share with you that I think is going to be powerful for you to do after you get off our call tonight is with water whether you put salt in your water 
or um, you bathe it, like getting into water and allowing for release. Uh, you can maybe put like, so I have my beautiful rose petals here, dun, 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 you know, and put them in uh, the bath and allow to have in a release. We can also speak to water. So we teach um, at the mystery school how to infuse your water, right? Like we can infuse your water with energy, infuse your body. We are water, right? We are water. And there's, so these emotions are there. We want to allow them to feel them allow them to be intensified, you know, I mean, surface so that they can be healed and released. So whether it's through your tears or your dreams or your pre or your profound re realizations, this eclipse is providing an opportunity for deep emotional cleansing. It is time to cleanse what is no longer serving you. Um, I, one of the things that I really love to use when I'm doing my uh, ceremonies is if uh, I'm an essential oil uh, girl and so I love um, right now I have with me um, dream catcher so which is like because we're working with the dreams and intuitions you can also use something like release release is another one that's really powerful so using uh, these essential oils is allowed to uh, you know to move into this experience of like how do I release these things from my body so the the Pisces Virgo ax axis, which is one of the things we're going to talk about, right, is this duality between spirituality and practicality. So we're talking about Pisces over here, intuition, subconscious, dreams, you know, all this otherworldly. And then this Pisces Virgo, Virgo axis is the balance between the ethereal and uh, the practical. So Pisces is about trust, surrender, and connection with the unseen realms while Virgo is about organization, health, and structure. And so together, they teach us that spiritual wisdom is not just for transcendent moments. It must be applied in our everyday lives. I, have a, I, I talk about this deeply um, all of the time. You know, th there's a whole new wave of information coming out into the world of like, um, with psychedelics, which I'm, no right or wrong, right? Like there's like, but they're like these peak moments where I have this spiritual awakening or this thing that happens. And then what do I do? I forget about it and I don't apply it into my everyday life. This is about how do I bring in the moments? How do I use them in my daily life and to really create something different? And so what I, what I share is, is I call it the 15, one, one rule. And what does that mean? That means 15 minutes a day. How many of you have 15 minutes a day to, to do something for yourself? If you don't have 15 minutes a day, then, uh, well, that's a whole other discussion about, about stress, <laughs> right? 15 minutes a day to bring these things and apply this stuff into your everyday life. One hour a week. You're here today, so obviously you're, you're, you're showing up for yourself. It means you are probably doing that 15 minutes a day already and an hour a week, and then one day a month. One day a month of the total immersion of yourself, whether that means turning off all social media and everything and just being with yourself or going and playing with your friends or um, having a spa day or um, I call it the live as if, living as if you already created the life of your dreams, whatever that looks like. Those are the basic simple rules. Now I've expanded my own and I do um, complete social media and online detoxes for days at a time. I do three day fasts every um, new moon, uh, you know, add in those things, but you don't have to do everything. You just have to start somewhere and bring it into your everyday life. So on this, this full moon eclipse, it's happening on this Virgo Pisces axis, which is um, bringing together what seems to be two opposing energies, right? So we have Virgo in the sign of healing and service and grounded action. It's where the sun sits during this eclipse, while Pisces, um, the dreamer, mystic, and spiritual healer is where the moon lies. And so these two energies work together to bring harmony between our practical earthly concerns, Virgo, and our higher spiritual aspirations, Pisces, which makes this eclipse even more potent is the presence of new, uh, no, ooh, eh. what makes this eclipse even more potent is the presence of Neptune. So that's the planet of illusion, right? Spirituality and dreams. And it's, it's a part of this full moon in Pisces. It's a conjunct. So it's the planet that dissolves boundaries. It helps us connect to the unseen realms and expand our consciousness. So we got a lot of this 
like illusion and going on and um uh this this can make things foggy it can create confusion it can create delusion if we're not fully grounded that's why i grounded us into this to, to start this energy out um any of you that have been in my other classes or um any of my things i usually do a full-on we ground you and then we pull your energy up and connect you in up into the god field and uh into the uh you know that divine light but today i grounded you why because of this Neptune energy. Uh, because we don't want to have that confusion or that delusion. We want to allow ourselves to be grounded in so that we can feel this energy and, and not have it be confusing. So it, during this full moon eclipse, as it you know it's rising, it may feel like the veils between our physical world and the spiritual world are, are at their thinnest. And it's gonna allow us to have this deep access, but it's asking us to release control. Hmm. How many of you have control things going on? You're like, well, you know, really, really don't know that I want to release control. One of the most beautiful gifts that you can give yourself, and this is actually what I was talking with one of my healers with um, earlier today, the theme of this is surrender. The theme of this is letting go. And uh, I know for a fact that when I haven't surrendered, so uh, recently when I went to Bali, I had a couple of extra weeks and I was like, oh, I'd really love to go somewhere else after Bali before I head home. And uh, so I was like, what should I do? And so I decided I was gonna ask my higher self. I'm like, okay, let me ask, like, what should I do? I really wanted to go to Vietnam. I was like, Vietnam has been on my list forever. Um, I was supposed to go there in 2020 and then I didn't. And uh, yeah, when I got the message from my higher self, my higher self was like, nope, no Vietnam this time. They were like, they're like, check out the Philippines or go somewhere. You know, there was a couple other options, but I was dead set on Vietnam. And sure enough, I got to Vietnam and within 24 hours of being in Vietnam, I was booking my, my early flight out because it was, it was, I was traumatized pretty much um now this was just my experience like vietnam is an incredible place i ended up uh, uh, in the shortened time that i ended up staying there having some great experiences but it was overwhelming for me it was one of those things and i was just like no so this is you know this is where are you not in surrender and surrender to what what is wanted from you from your higher self uh you know like when i started the, when i walked away from my business in 2022 the academy and I started the Sacred Soul Alchemy Mystery School this past year. I was in complete surrender. I was like, no, I don't, I, I'm, I don't want to start a mystery school. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, who, who am I? I don't want to share this, this information. Uh, you know, this is not my thing. And I was like, but I'm going to do what I'm told, but you're going to have to fill it if you want me to do it, because that's the only way I'm going to do it. And then, of course, the universe was like, well, here you go. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to do that. But I was in surrender. I didn't do it because it was what I thought I wanted to do. I didn't do it because I thought it was going to be the next thing that was whatever. It did it because I was told. And that, that was the same experience that I've had. So where are you holding into control? Think about areas of your life. Is it your business? Is it your career? Is it a relationship? Is it uh, your health? Is it, they, give me a, a, an idea of like, where do you need to surrender more in your life? I'd love to know in the chat. Like, I would love to hear, um, oh, I'm hearing me too. Huge, ugly cries all weekend. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so everything has been a lot of intense in, in, information. Addiction, yeah. Uh, creativity, business and finances. Mm-hmm. Where do you need to surrender more? Yeah. When we do not surrender, right? When we when we're controlling it ourselves, I I I I, I use it in this way. Think of this like the quantum, the, the unified field, consciousness, the God field, whatever you want to call this energy of pure love. It is a soup of infinite possibilities, and when you have control of that soup. You are limiting your viewpoint to one line. And so what's happening is all of a sudden, all of the other possibilities that are in the field disappear because you have honed in completely into this one thing. This is how I have to have it be to have my experience. And so the universe has no room to make a move, make magic, to put things in there. 
when you surrender and allow and open, the possibilities are then allowed to be open to you. And you can pick, like, I call it the quantum soup. Remember alphabet soup when we were all kids, right? Alphabet soup, you'd have like A, B, C, D, E, right? When you open up to the quantum soup, instead of only being able to get A out of your alphabet soup, you have A, B, C, D. You're like, oh, do, ah, ah, do, ah. I can pick something else because I'm open to the possibility. And, you know, we, uh, I've now learned that I, I know for a fact that the universe has my back, that the universe wants for me more than I want for me. And that if I just allow it to do its thing, stuff just happens really miraculously. I have people that like, or look at my life and they're like, how did, how did that, how did that happen? And I'm like, I live in a, 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 a symphony of miracles right? Things manifest and show up, manifest and show up in my life all of the time because I'm living in a place of surrender. But trust me, it wasn't always like that. Like I, I had no, uh, I, I thought that I could do it all on my own um, and that I didn't need to surrender. So I was just thinking about that. I love these answers here of where you need to surrender. So many things, family, career, um, yeah, relationships, marriage, health and addictions, exceptions of others yeah F food weight body issues so those of you that don't know much of my story i can tell you i've had all of those right i was an international drug trafficker in my 20s i um i had um eating disorders i have uh i was sexually traumatized traumatized as a child i was a 10 out of 10 on the a score i had relationship i had every you know addictions all of the things i know and the way that i healed was in allowing for the opening to come up to allow for movement. And that's what led me into the work that I do today that I've now been able to share and gift with the world for the last 15 years. But it was not through um, me controlling it. I remember my coming to Jesus moment was in 2009 when uh, I had just lost my job. It was one of the first real jobs I had had uh, in a really long time because I had come out of uh, being a, a, out of drug trafficking and I had spent five years trying to get my life together and I'd gotten a job and I had a, I had a girlfriend and we lived together and my girlfriend left me, um, I got fired from my job and I came home and I had an eviction notice on my door. And I was like, I give up, I'm doing what society says, like I'm, I'm no longer, you know, I'm not doing drugs, I'm not doing this, I'm not selling, you know, and I'm, I'm living the normal life and I was like, and everything fell apart. And I dropped to my knees and I said, show me the way, show me the way because I, and I lived, I lived in my car for a year um, and uh, really learned some, some real things about, about life, but I was in complete surrender and it was during that time while I was living out of my car that I was personal training on the side to make money that I um, met a woman by the name of Dr. Eddie Benzion and she was the person that uh, gave me my gateway drug. And my gateway drug was the Intuitive Intelligence Academy. I mean, not, not the, the, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Uh, the Academy was mine. The Institute for Integra Integra Integrative Nutrition. And she says, why don't you go to the school? So I took my $500 a month that I could have put towards uh, a rent on a place and instead still lived in my car and started, uh, started school and went, to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. That was surrender. And at that moment of surrender, it, it, that was in 2010 that I did that. In 2017, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition brought me back as a teacher. So surrender, right? Like where do you need to surrender and allow the universe to show up for you so that you can do that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing. I would have a book coming out with Hay House next year. I wouldn't have um, had a docu-series that reaches 2 million people if it wasn't for the fact of that surrender at that moment in my life. So it's asking you, where do you need to surrender? So this eclipse, it offers a unique opportunity for you to dive into the unknown parts of yourself. So this is where you're going to get out that pen and paper. And we're going to work on some of these things. These are the shit we're going to be releasing. You might be burning this later or sending it off in some water. But I want you to think, what illusions have you been holding on to? What fantasies or beliefs are you ready to let go of so that you can step into your truest, most powerful reality? 
Just take a moment to think of those two. I want you to actually physically write them down, right? Pen to paper. And then if you also want to share them in the chat, we would love to hear them. But we are gonna use this stuff to release and I'm gonna let you, we're gonna be letting this stuff go, part of a physical releasing ceremony. So what illusions have you been holding on to? What fantasies or beliefs are you ready to let go of that you can step into your truest, highest, most powerful reality? What old emotional baggage or karmic stories are you still holding on to? I held on to a story of for 20 some years around love and abandonment and rejection that I thought I had healed and cleared and I thought I had healed and cleared because I had this amazing love story and then it ended and it caused me to become an international drug trafficker because I was so traumatized because I hadn't healed my own trauma, I was so young. And then 20 years later, I got to have a retry a, a, a re in that same relationship with that same person. And then I got to heal the final karmic story of that experience. And then we got to become best friends and, and say goodbye to the relationship and become best friends. But then over the past weekend, I just completely lost my mind over the whole thing for a moment, right? The releasing of the last pieces. So what old emotional baggage or karmic stories are you still holding on to? Now on another piece of paper, I want you to write, how can you create space for the wild, untamed aspects of your soul to come forward and flourish? How can you create space? We don't wanna throw that one out. So write that one on a separate piece of paper. See what we got coming over here. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Yes. The universe is always conspiring in our favor for over to receiving it and surrender to the process. Yes. Oh, so your life started getting wild in 2009 too. Yeah. I need to surrender my parents, my future husband, having money in advance, the illusion, the illusion that I can conceive Convince or persuade someone to love me that I can ensure future survival by having money in the bank. Yeah, beautiful. The, oh, here, the other questions. Okay, um, I can actually put these in the chat for you also so that you have them. So the last question was, how can you create space for the wild, untamed aspects of your soul to come forward and flourish? So I'm going to put these four questions into the chat so that you can read them also. So just in case. There's two of them. Beautiful. Here's the rest. Awesome. Okay. So this powerful experience, right? The energies of the, the eclipse combined with the north and south nodes that are shifting are reminding us that our soul's path is always evolving and it's time to realign with your deepest desires and your soul purpose. How many of you have a desire or a purpose or something that you're almost there, you're almost aligned to, but there's just one little thing that's holding you back. Or there, you don't, so maybe you don't even know what it is, but you have an idea, you're like, I can see my destiny. I know that there's something greater out there for me. I know that there's something I'm moving towards, but there just seems to be something here holding me back. If, you, if that's you, I would love to put a yes, 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 I'm so close, one, 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 yeah, seeing all the answers, yeah. So this is the time, this eclipse energy here is in this time. And so that's what, you know, this, so we're doing this beautiful ceremony today, and then in a couple of days over the weekend, we start the docu-series, and there'll be seven days of incredible healings and transformations and ways for you to, to move through this that is free. It's a gift that I do to the world every year. Um, takes me, it takes our team about four to five months to produce. And, uh, you know, that's, it's a way for you to do that. And then if you're ready for more energy, um, I'm going to be sharing about the wait list. You can find out about how to, um, find out more about my mystery school. Our next session starts in October and it's going to be like grounding in, like finding your soul's purpose, getting like that last piece in there. Okay. 
So let's go back to this, this Virgo energy. So Virgo is asking you to take these, these spiritual insights and ground them into reality. It's asking you to do daily rituals, health and habits, right? Like it's, it's saying, pay attention to your routines. It's asking you to look at your work and your personal life. So I want you to think about one thing. What is one thing that you can add into your life? A ritual, a practice. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything massive, but something simple that you can commit to doing daily to bring this realm into the now. What is one thing? Share in the chat one thing that you're willing to commit to. Heart, breath, yes. Meditation, yes. Maybe you'll give somebody else an idea of, of what that looks like. Maybe it's breath work. Maybe it's light pulling, right? There's, uh, I just like really, I get up every morning at sunrise and dance in this, uh, dance outside with the sunrise and do a light pulling exercise. And, and uh, yes, movement, embodiment practices, beautiful. Yeah, meditation, even if it's a couple of minutes. Okay, and then there's like, yeah, maybe just lack a little bit of consistency and you just, oh, I like the sky breath, okay. Allow yourself to say, am I committed to my transformation? Am I committed to these things changing, right? To these things shifting. Just a few minutes a day. And that's, you know, one of the things that we emphasize is the embodiment of spiritual lessons, right? At the Sacred Soul Alchemy Mystery School, we are talking about how do I embody this? The lower chakras, the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, grounded energy, movement in the body. We, how do I bring all of this stuff in as above, so below, spirit and physical, right? The two, the yin and the yang, it's all brought together, <coughs> bringing this energy into our body. And, you know, so that, it, so that it's not only a meditative or a mystical experience, but it's integrated into your everyday choices and your actions. And this becomes a place where then you have discernment, you have grounding, and you can have miraculous, miracle, you know, miracles in your life that, that turn up. They're not really miracles. It is your divine right and destiny to have it show up that way. Now... We have the energy of Isis for this incredible eclipse, right? So Isis is the divine feminine. She's one of the divine mother archetypes. And she's the feminine of healing and magic. What have I just been talking about? Two things, healing and magic, right? So in ancient Egyptian myth, uh, mythology, Isis, Aset, is revered as this goddess of healing, magic, also marriage and protection, um, also known for her sex magic, right? There's all sorts of things. She's known for her profound ability to heal the wounded, resurrect the dead, and protect those in need. And she represents the divine feminine. The, and this is the return of the divine feminine so we can come into sacred union. And her power lies in her capacity to weave the realms of spirit and matter, making her, again, what am I talking about? Spirit and matter, the, you know, heaven and earth, the body, and above and below, she's making this, you know, powerful symbol of transformation and renewal. And that's the exact energy that's being activated by this full moon. Um, and so she, Isis has a deep connection to the moon uh, as the lunar cycles were sacred to her in ancient Egypt. I got my initiation uh, in Egypt in 2021 when I, I, I was able to lay in the sarcophagus of the Great Pyramid. Uh, and, um, and then I, I had some initiations in Luxor with some of the temple guardians and some amazing things happened. And so I've been channeling energy from, uh, from this lineage of Isis for a while now and just have been deeply connected to these cycles of the moons and the, and you know, the moon cycle, cycle, moon phases symbolize this exact thing, birth, rebirth, the cycle, the, the cycles of nature, right? And it's, this echoes the mythology of Isis, uh, especially in her role in resurrecting her husband, Osiris. And so Isis is shown with a crescent moon on her crown. She, you know, this signifies her mastery over these beautiful lunar energies uh, and her ability to channel them for healing and protection. And so we're gonna be using in our healing ceremony today, we're gonna be using Isis as a, um, as a way to um, encourage our deep healing and our transformation to release and let go of these things you were writing down. Uh, and so this, um, this 
invitation in Pisces is this to heal these emotional wounds and release what no longer serves you. Um, and uh, you know, using Isis and the energy of that archetype, whether you, uh, whatever your belief systems are around it is the energy of this archetype to use her divine magic to heal and to protect and through spiritual insights and emotional releases and um, the disillusion of illusions, right? Again, back to that Neptune. So this moment offers an opportunity for us to align with that, emp that, that empowerment. And then um, eclipses also really bring dramatic changes and shifts. So don't be surprised if, you know, you have some, um, some drastic things happen on this eclipse, like relationships all of a sudden and somebody gets fired from a job all of a sudden, you know, like you say you want to create these things and then all of a sudden your whole life gets shaken up, but it can feel dis destabilizing and overwhelming. So Isis has this powerful symbol. She's a protection, right? She, she provides spiritual guardianship as you navigate these transitions. When I was in uh, Bali back in March, right after my, uh, Bliss Bali retreat with my with my students. I uh, was going through a really uh, uh, challenging experience, all related to the same thing I've been talking about. Uh, and I was in three days of meditation and fasting. And Isis came in and uh, in this huge vision, and she she pulled her her wings around me, and she actually gave me insight and vision. And I actually was transported from my place in Bali all the way back to the United States to see what was happening and what was going on. Um, and it was a very powerful invoking of protection and energy because then it allowed me to know um, what I needed to do for my next step. So invoking her energy to feel grounded and supported, um, especially with this full moon, opens the door to profound shifts in your life. And so we're gonna use her magic, right, to allow for this, um, for this blend because she was known to combine divine will with earthly action. This is again, that per Pisces Virgo access, right? Is acting as to blend mystical and practical. It's, uh, it's asking us to harness our spiritual power to create tangible results that mirror Virgo's grounding energy, reminding us that magic and spiritual wisdom must be brought into our daily lives. And this spiritual alchemy, you know, soul alchemy, will transform our wombs into wisdom, our grief into love, our loss into new beginnings, and aligns with the soul alchemy you're invited to experience here. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about a couple of other things, but we're gonna do this incredible Isis ritual and healing for, with us right now, right? So we're gonna be invoking her presence, and we're gonna do this beautiful, uh, energetic healing and then we'll go on to the next piece that way if anybody has to drop off at the top of the hour even though we're gonna go beyond that you'll have had a moment of the ceremony to release and to heal some things and to move through some more things and uh, and then we'll move on to the next piece so let's all just let me take a drink of water first real quick mm. I'm gonna grab my essential oil All right, so let's just come into this moment, this space, and this time. Just want you to start to breathe deep. We're gonna be invoking the beautiful energy, calling upon the energy of Isis to assist us in releasing past wounds, healing our hearts, protecting our spiritual path. So now, just breathing in through the portal of your heart. And breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out and this is where if you have a flower or a small crystal or small object that you want to use such as a small a, a sand or a stone something that you're willing to release so if you just maybe have a even if it's just a piece of paper right you're gonna already be releasing that paper but if you have something else I've got my beautiful rose petals that have all disintegrated and fallen apart now 
that I'm using for this. And so I want you to just breathe, breathing into your heart. And now you're going to just start to feel, sense and notice just allowing the frequency so breathing down down deep into mother gaia and i want you to start to notice feel sense where is that emotion that thing that you need to let go of those things that you that you felt where are they stuck in your body just notice, feel it. What color is it? Does it have a movement? Is it swirling? Is it stuck? Is it pulsating? Is it up? Is it down? And as you breathe in and as you breathe out, I want you to just breathe out of your mouth and imagine that you're blowing and releasing all of this energy into a beautiful pink bubble just right out in front of you. Just noticing that, that feeling, that place in your body. And then slightly opening your eyes or your gaze just to gaze at that object of your choice whether it's your flower or your crystal or your sacred object or stone and i'm calling upon the loving miracle healing of isis calling in her energy of healing and miraculous miracles divine healing for releasing of what no longer serves and just as this beautiful sacred object is subject to creation and destruction life and death so too can the pain that has plagued me finally reset and rest in peace and the loving embrace of the goddess And now take and hold your left hand over your heart and your right hand over that beautiful object, that sacred object. And I want you to imagine, feel, sense, and notice and feel that energy from wherever that, that feeling, that wound was in your body and it starts to flow up through your heart being transmuted to love as it flows out of your heart and down your arms and into that sacred object. And then saying, I give deep honoring and gratitude for the sacrifice of this beloved sacred object. And I now release the pain, the issue, any attachment to it, conscious or unconscious, into the sacred receptacle now, allowing for this energy, feeling this energy as you allow for this release feeling that color, that movement flowing out of your body and into this sacred object as beautiful Isis stands there with her wings of protection. Allow for the release now what no longer serves you and start to fill up with the energy of love. Can you send those parts of you love, send that situation love? Love does not mean that you say it was right or wrong. Sending it love shifts the energy of it so that you can heal. 
allow the healing energy and the magic of the field of Isis to come in and pour out this energy from your body. And now with that hand that's on your chest, you're just gonna start to tap, start tapping this energy, tapping it. I now release, and just repeat after me. I now release that which no longer serves me. I'm now breaking karmic ties. I'm now releasing for all space and time and dimensions and reality. You can say, I now release, and then any word or phrase or thing or person from my physical body, from my emotional body, from my mental body, for my spiritual body, for all space, time, dimension, and reality. Just tapping, allow yourself to feel that release, letting it go, letting it go, letting it go. Surrender, surrender. Asking for your surrender now, as is asking you to surrender. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, allow any pain or attachment or suffering to flow from your heart out of your right hand and be transferred into this sacred object. It's time to let it go. And if you want, you can repeat this with me, beloved Isis, miracle healer and priestess of the healing arts. Or you can use any person, thing, place. You can say God, source, universe. Take this suffering from me now. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender it to you to heal. Let me find the wisdom and the peace. The resolution that is meant to come from this dark blessing. May the darkness be turned to light with karmic grace and unconditional love. So be it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am open to your miracle healing completely. And then withdrawing your hands into prayer either into prayer position or one hand over the other on your heart and gently bow before the sacred object. And then tonight, after this, you're gonna take it somewhere, put it in a garden or a natural setting, somewhere where it will not be disturbed. So, you know, I recommend tucking it into the earth, tucking it underneath something, you know, somewhere where it's not gonna get picked up by any wandering curious people and just allow for that release now thank you thank you thank you thank you yes and now just coming back to this space and this time recommend tonight you can use things like a white or a blue candle which symbolizes Isis's healing energy you can use a, a, that candle uh, if you don't have a white or blue candle you don't have to but right and burn that paper uh, let it go speak her name ask for protection meditate on what he needs healing in your life you know allow for that magic to keep transformation Really great stones to use with this are lapis lazuli. It's a really, excuse me, powerful stone that also can be used, the energy of the lapis lazuli. So now as we're releasing these karmic patterns, right? 
from 2015, 2016, 2006, 2008, closing this eight year cycle, you're, you're releasing them. You can break free, you can let go of that emotional weight. We get to now open to intuitive downloads, to the influence of that Pisces energy, right? We can open a portal for profound spiritual insights to revelations. And so as you're releasing and letting go, you start to open to these new spiritual insights. I'd love to know, what did you notice? Did you feel the release in your system? Did you feel the release in your body? Allowing yourself to feel this movement. And just share in the chat. So we're allowing you to break free of this, you know, these illusions, these delusions that have clouded your vision in the past so that you can see clearly. How many of you said clarity was something you wanted to get from today? Like you were seeking clarity. So many of you said that, right? This eclipse is inviting you to see things clear, clearly. Clair it, the, the challenge is, is that this influence that's been going on, there, it is, uh, it is clouding our visions, it's creating illusions, it's creating delusions. So that karmic in, in information, the stuff stuck from our childhood and in our past is all holding on to us so we can't see clearly. So when you in, let, let go of this energetically in your body, right? That's why I say take a water bath tonight, a salt bath, scrub your skin with salt, move in the embodiment of, of this, like, you know, breath work. We're actually having our um, two-day autumn equinox retreat here in Austin over the weekend. And literally that's the whole thing is we're moving through all of this energy to open to clarity, to allow for that. So for yourself, give yourself a retreat. If you're not joining us here in Austin and you need that, find a way to give yourself a retreat. Surrender and embody this experience. Allow yourself to cry, scream, yell, beat the pillow, whatever, move it out of your system, you know? And then give yourself these practical daily um, practices. Some of the things that you might think about doing, right? A lot of you said meditation, journaling, uh, you know, energy cleansing rituals. I, I personally love my crystals and my essential oils and my sounds and my frequencies. I am a sound girl. I'm a frequency person. Like what, you know, in our, in our mystery school, we go deep into uh, frequencies and the and, and sound and the power of sacred geometry right like sacred geometry works with the brain and how the brain works and then embodiment of this stuff how do you embody this because it's not enough to be doing this work up here in the spiritual realms and not bringing it in allow it to really to solidify into your um, into your into your experience into your moment uh, in this exact experience so here are some of the things that you might feel in the next couple of days or in the next, you know, like up into here. And let me know if you've been feeling any of these. Uh, if you have physical fatigue or tiredness, emotional overwhelm or resurfacing of old triggers, uh, heightened intuition, vivid dreams, spiritual insights, irritability, or even feeling ungrounded. These are some of the energetic and emotional experiences. How many of you have been experiencing that? Give me a two in the chat if you're like, yes, all of the above. Okay, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, everybody, so many people, right. So these are the things that you want right, to look at. So what it's saying is, is surrender, rest, replenish, allow yourself time. T spend time journaling about patterns or emotions. So yes, we did this emotional release and we released it into an object, but now it's asking you to physically do some things to release. So whether that's yoga or mudras, right? So one of the things that we're teach we teach is how the sacred geometry in the body works with the nervous system and through movement, specific sacred geometry movements, some of them yoga movements, right? That allow for the, for the moving of this energy in our system. So find something that feels good for you to move this energy out of your system. And journaling or writing is one of those things that works with the, the actual energetic system. And you can just write journal gibberish if you want, or 
if you're working on karmic shit or stuff from like family members or people like that, you can write those letters and burn them or never send them. Tell them how you feel. Tell them what was up. Get it out of your system, right? Release it and let it go. And then I want you to look at what cycles are closing in your life. It's an 18 year cycle ending. What are you finally ready to close the door on so that you can step into your highest destiny? I was, I stepped into my highest destiny uh, timeline of my next, my next one in June or July. And then I got pulled back into this other experience. I'm like, no, 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 I'm here. This is where I'm going to be. I am done. I'm closing this chapter of my life. I am allowed, I have huge work to do in the world. Uh, and I, you know, I am here as a devotee to life, a devotee to uh, sharing. Uh, and that is where I'm here. So I'm in complete surrender to life. I'm in complete surrender and devotion. I am I'm working on that practice of how do I devote myself to life? to my work, to my spirituality, to my, uh, to, you know, the, the people in my life being in devotion. So some of the things that you might want to do tonight, right? As you're doing this safely, burn that paper, right? A way of letting go grounding, use nature as a grounding tool. I grounded you in today, but I have a PEMF mat that I use every day that I ground on. I also go out and put my feet in the ground. Um, I actually teach uh, grounding practices so you can pull light and ground in. That Mulabanda lock, that thing that I shared with you is a very powerful practice. You need to ground every day. You know, it's so a walking barefoot, mindful breathing, uh, grounding crystals, black tourmaline, hematite are really powerful. Um, it helps balance the spiritual and physical er energies, especially during this heightened time. I say ground every day, but right now even more. Uh, the, the cleansing of the bath or a shower, taking cleansing bath. Uh, I love to put my herbs and my salts and my essential oils, things that are really great right now, sage or lavender, help to clear negative energy from your aura field. Or if you have things like dream catcher or uh, release, both are really great for that. Uh, and so we want to make sure that you're paying and then pay attention, close attention to your dreams and your intuitive nudges during this eclipse. I would sleep with a notebook by your bed, right? Like uh, with that, with the Pisces ruling the realm of dreams and the subconscious, the messages you receive now may hold profound spiritual ex ex significance. So keep a, a dream journal by your, by, by your bed. And I highly, highly recommend if you can, uh, the veil right now is really really thin between the realms. Avoid alcohol or any substances that can intensify ex spiritual experiences in, uh, in an overwhelming or ungrounded way. You know, it's best to avoid them during this period to get clarity and protect your energy. Um, this eclipse, full moon eclipse, it's, it, it's a powerful portal. It's opening a powerful portal for the universe to deliver magic miracles and unexpected gifts. So my next thing to say is expect unexpected magic miracles and gifts in your life. Say universe, show me, show me, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Like I say it all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I always ask the universe, how can it get better? How can it get any better than this universe? Show me how, show me how it can get better. And I also ask for things like give me a neon sign. Literally, I've actually asked for that and drove down the street and saw a neon sign that said yes. And I said, oh, yep, I was asking a yes for no question. And I was like, okay, you can ask for that, right? Now is the time. Ask the universe to deliver you magic and miracles. Ask for it to deliver you signs. Ask for it to show you. And you know, how can it get any better than this? Show me. Show me how. This eclipse is encouraging you to surrender to the flow of life and trust in the divine plan. So where are you going to surrender and trust more in the divine? Um, and then a, the last piece of this is the energy of this eclipse is not just about releasing and letting go. It's about receiving. How do you receive more? How do you activate your divine feminine energy. And that's whether you're masculine or feminine, a male or a female, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your divine feminine energy of being a re receptor, right? Spiritual shifts activated by this eclipse create a fertile ground for manifesting miracles. So how can you receive more? Well, one of the ways that you can receive more is you can join my free docu-series quantum-miracles.com. It's free. 
Go over there and join it if you haven't already. You're going to be able to receive ancient wisdom, cutting, sci cutting edge science, teachings and techniques that are going to really just blow your mind. It's one of my favorite gifts to the world. And um, how else you can receive, if you are interested in getting on the wait list for information about my upcoming mystery school, just put your name in the chat. Just put your name and we'll put you on the wait list. And when we are, um, when we are doing the intro and all the information um, upcoming in October, we will share with you um, the information at, about what our mystery school is and you'll get to learn more about it. You'll get to join some fun things. You'll get some special discounts. Um, oh yeah, here, here's the website. I'm gonna put it in there for the, for the docu-series. The website is quantum-miracles.com. So quantum, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, put the link in there for you. So if you have not signed up for the free docu-series, do that now. And then um, if you um, want to get special information and discounts and all that, when the mystery school, you want to go on the waiting list to know about that, when it offers, just put your name in the chat and we will um, make sure to send you information. So there you go, quantummiracles.com. And uh, thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, what was that? Oh, Dr. Tony Nader. Hold on, I'm trying to go back and read. The name of the person who... Uh, Dr. Tony Nader is the name of the, uh, the per person that was doing the astrology in the body in 1995. Um, Veronica, if you actually want to send me an email, I can send you this, this one of the, the documents about it and everything. So he's actually one of my teachers. I'm getting a PhD in the science of consciousness right now. And he was one of my teachers. So it was super awesome. Yay. Thank you all so very much. Awesome. Wonderful. Yes. Um, I can, um, the essential oil for uh, the, the dream catcher. Hey, Karen, anybody that has a question, like, so my email is Melissa at Melissa .com. Obviously just reply to the email that it got you here. Right. Um, and I'll send you the link for the, um, for the essential oil. I can send you the link for that. I can send you the link for the docu series. Um, and then also if you're interested in, uh, being a part of, or knowing more about our, uh, Sacred Soul Alchemy Mystery School will give you that. So reply to the email that got you here, um, not the Zoom one, but the regular one, or melissa at melissaminick.com. And uh, I can send you uh, any of the rituals that we did tonight or any of the information or the information about the essential oils. So awesome. Wait, I got a bunch more messages in here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all so very much. Awesome. Okay, I'm seeing the emails. We will get all that. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Good night.